Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Every year uh, in St. Petersburg, Russia, Russia organizes the St. Petersburg International Economic Forum and invites uh, business personalities, leaders, world leaders, politicians, and they discuss uh, economic issues, geostrategic issues, and um, usually it's a very interesting uh, forum to watch. Uh, I watch it a few times, not entirely because it's hours and hours, but segments, whatever it's uh, uh, deemed important by other people, obviously. And they usually have, obviously they have international media come uh, and cover the, the forum. And usually they, um, the host on the stage is a, uh, uh, news personality. I know it was Megan Kelly a, a while ago it, from the United States. It was uh, Zachariah, Zachariah something, uh, another guy from the uh, United States. I can't remember his, uh, his first name nevertheless. And uh, they have uh, uh, conversations and they answer certain questions. Uh, it was Putin's time um, to speak and to answer questions. And this is from, um, we find uh, from Ukrainska Pravda, an Ukrainian uh, outlet, obviously. So uh, we'll see uh, how they will, uh, what new words they would use or what commentaries they would uh, deem necessary to be used for, uh, to address Putin and all that. So this is the title. It is from um, today, June 17th, 2022. Russia will use nuclear weapons if its sovereignty is threatened, said Putin. So Russian President Vladimir Putin says Russia is no threatening the world with nuclear weapons, but warns that it is ready to use them in, ev in the event of a threat to Russia's sovereignty. So, and I'm quoting um, Putin, one irresponsible politician would blurt something out, then another at a very high level by the way, at the level of, say, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the top officials there are holding forth on this subject. And we're supposed to say nothing. We answer accordingly. As soon as we answer, everyone latches out that, look, Russia's issuing threats. We are not threatening, but everyone needs to know that we have it and we will use it if necessary to protect our sovereignty. And now they're gonna say here that uh, some other people suggested and made jokes about using nuclear weapons, starting with uh, Maria Zakharova, very intelligent uh, woman. I suggest you watch her, uh, not watch her, but uh, listen to what she says. And uh, she said, she's the Russian Ministry of Foreign Affairs spokeswoman suggested on uh, the 12th of June, of June that Russia could use nuclear weapons in Poland. I don't know the context, so I, I can't remember exactly uh, what that was all about. And then we have Vyacheslav Volodin, the head of the state. I always have problem with his first name because it, it sounds like a combination between two, but it's none of those. So Vyacheslav, Volodin, the head of the State Duma of the Russian Federation, stated that a possible nuclear conflict would destroy the European continent if nuclear weapons are returned to Ukraine. Then we have the US President Joe Biden has warned that Russia would face extremely severe consequences if it uses nuclear weapons. I don't think at that point Russia will give a, uh, know what I mean, about uh, the consequences. And besides, uh, once that cat is out of the bag, you can put it back. Um, and then we have Dmitry Rogozin, director of the Russia's space agency, Roscosmos, joked that the Kremlin could launch a nuclear strike on Sweden and Finland if the two countries joined NATO. Well, as I said, once the cat is out of the bag, you can't put it back, unfortunately. And... Uh, I, I only suspect that I don't think will happen, but let's say if, if that would be to happen, I, I think it's going to be, to be something on uh, as a warning. I don't think it's going to be dropped on a um, populated area. Maybe it's going to be dropped in um, 
I don't know, know, Ukraine in a crop field, you know, crop field, just to say, hey, this is the first one, the second one is going to be on whatever target they deem necessary. And uh, what next? Because once you open that door, a lot of people will say, oh, well, it's usable, so why not? And you could have then um, the first one that I can think of, um, that is my assessment. Um, the first one I think would be the first one to be not only saying it, but very uh, itchy to use would be Israel, the Jewish state, I'm sorry. The Jewish state uh, will use it against uh, the Arab state, <laughs> or maybe not the Arab state, but maybe about the on the Persian state, whatever they will uh, deem to use it. Uh, the problem is they, they, they don't legally um, come and say that, hey, we have them, even though everybody knows they have them. Nevertheless, then uh, I, you can think of Pakistan and the, the other guys, India and uh, China. <clears throat> it's gonna be a, it could be a flurry of stupidity after that, but I hope that doesn't happen. So sometimes that's why I, I think also uh, President of France, Macron, talks about do not humiliate Putin. I don't think it's going to get to that point of humiliation because Russia was not allowed to get to that point. It will increase uh, its pressure on uh, Ukraine and its uh, uh, sponsors uh, little by little. And if, uh, if uh, I don't know how, how this could end, but never, nevertheless, they will not use uh, nuclear weapons. I, might, I, I, I would give them 1% maybe not even, that Russia would use uh, nuclear weapons in an uh, offensive way, like to gain territories or something like that. But, you know, I've seen things before where they say, well, uh, I defended myself, therefore I didn't even punch you, I just uh, blocked and clearly punched you in the nose. So they can say this is for this, and actually it was nothing related to that, you know? Like um, for for many, you know, like the weapons of mass destruction in uh, in um, Iraq, if you remember, we're gonna bomb the shit out of you, and uh, you can't do anything about it because we know you have them. So under that pretext, the coalition of forces, the good and free, free the free world, destroyed a uh, what twenty million people country. And because of the bad dude, but not worse than others, that uh, our still they are still our allies. So uh, that that uh, justification doesn't fly. Oh, he was a bad dude. So are many others that we supported gladly. And uh, nevertheless, well, uh, I think um, I think I would say I don't want to condone that, but at least you know how far to push with. Uh, Russia. Now, I'm not saying that, as I said, they could just uh, do what the Americans did in, in the coalition of the free world, uh, did in uh, Iraq, and just find a reason and say, okay, there's a reason. Boom. What are they going to do about it? I think everybody's going to be freezing, like freeze. Don't, don't move. What are they, they going to do, Biden? What are they going to do? What are you going to do? Nothing. Nothing. Because if one was dropped, there's going to be another one dropped more easy, easier than the first one. The decision is going to be easier to take for the second one and easier for the third one and so on. It's like an, uh, in, a, in a war, if you want. Once you, you know, uh, defended yourself, bam, 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 and you shoot someone over there, there's going to be, you know, as an atomic bomb drop, easier and easier for the next and the next and the next, unless, uh, until you become, uh, you know, it's just a number. Well, thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth, and be just.